Howdy again, that's Mr. Pete, also known as Tubal Kane. Welcome back to Studio B. I have today two steric micrometers that are hopelessly stuck and are essentially scrap. But can I salvage them? Can I save them? Can I unstick them? I don't know. However, if it doesn't work, you won't see this video at all. It'll be on the cutting room floor. But let's see if we can do anything with these. I very recently acquired both of these micrometers, a 1 inch and a 2 inch steret as I just said, and they are hopelessly stuck as I also said, meaning that there's no way, no amount of pressure that can allow the spindle here to, to rotate. Corrosion, rust, we don't know. Same with this one, only it's stuck all the way closed, and that's a very recent one given to me by Eugene Jensen, but I want to see if I can salvage it. Now, you should never store your micrometers in the closed position. It could seize up right in there, although I doubt it with the carbide, but anyway, leave them open a little bit when you put them away. But most of the corrosion I've observed during my life is right in here between the spindle and the frame. Now that's a very, very close fit, incredibly close. This is ground and I suppose the hole is lapped. So to me that's where the corrosion is and what I'm going to do to start with is soak them for a day or two in a well-known solvent uh, penetrant and we'll see if that does any good, although I very much doubt it. I have little faith in a lot of those products I just don't see how there's room for it to get down in here. How about just putting a big channel lock on there and just jerking it? Would that break it loose? You know, it might. But a vice grips would be even better, wouldn't it? But that's Bubba's way of doing it. And the other thing is, if you try those nasty tools, you're going to tear up the knurls instantly. Even if you wrap a piece of lead or copper or something around it, you're, you're going to damage it. But the other thing that happens with steric micrometers is that the thimble out here, this is the barrel, this is the thimble, will often slip on this screw. Because if you take this apart, you'll see just a little bit of a taper on there. And that's where it's liable to slip and not uh, uh, reduce the friction or the jamming or whatever it is right in here. So that's not a good method either, but let me show you something or tell you a story that happened 65 years ago. Here's another potential way of getting one loose if it's not too bad, but these might have been corroded up like that for years, but using jaws like this that are protect, these are aluminum, one might have a good grasp right here and then turn it and see what happens. I'm not going to do that. That's just a possibility that I wanted to talk about. Now I've told this story many times, but this is the exact steric micrometer, not a similar one, that I've had since I was 16 years old. Hugh Wolf from Rock Island, Illinois, he was a shop teacher and he gave it to my dad because it was stuck. My dad didn't want to mess it and said, here Lyle, see if you can loosen this up. And he didn't give me any advice or so, and remember, I'm only 16 at the time, that would have been 1960, and I, I had my own micrometer, it, but it didn't work. So, I fiddled around, and believe it or not, there's no damage, so I must have had a little finesse even when I was a kid. But remember, I was the Speed Queen repairman, too, at a hardware store, so I, I must have been fairly good at some things, I can't imagine that I was, but I soaked it for really weeks until I forgot about it, then I went back, and uh, in liquid wrench and eventually I worked it loose and this micrometer has made me a lot of money I used this in the various machinist jobs that I had over the years and it cleaned up and it has worked fine ever since but I noticed at the high school the first couple of years I'd come back in September when school started and often there would be a micrometer that would be stuck and I would have to work on that and uh, so it's frustrating so you want to oil this and make sure a little bit of oil gets inside. All right, now back to the business at hand. They say that mare's urine is an excellent penetrant, so luckily I got a neighbor with a big old horse that they call Lady. She's a Belgian. Anyway, mare's urine. Put that in there. And this one in here, I hope it fits. Barely. And there they are. 
And what will happen now? Will it, uh, will it be totally corroded? I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's my secret blend of herbs and spices. All right, that's the end of the video for today. I will see you in two, three, four days, or maybe a week, whatever, and we'll take these out and see if we can get them loose. I do not have a lot of faith in this, but got nothing to lose. See you then. Okay, it's two days later. Let's see what we got here. The micrometers have been soaking in that mystery compound for two days, and boy, does that stink. Lady must be in heat. Well, let's take these out. I'll blow them off and see if we have any movement at all. Well, of course, it's not going to turn now, but be right back. Okay, the game plan here was to take the Bridgeport vise with aluminum jaws that have no serrations on them, and I was going to attempt to hold the hardened spindle right here, just like that, and wiggle it. But before I even did that, I thought, well, I'll just give her a crank, and it started turning. Look at that. So, wow. Some liquid got in there. Look at that. Let me wipe that off. This is too good to be true. Too good to be true. I'm going to take it all, all the way out and see what it looks like and examine it. Be right back. Now looking at the spindle closely, you see some staining right here. That is obviously where it was stuck. So I'm going to put this in the lathe off camera and polish it a little bit. This is crocus cloth. You know what that is. About the finest paper you can get. And I'm going to, again, this is hardened. This is the spindle. This is the thimble. Barrel. I went over this before. I know it. Frame and anvil. Those are the five parts I required students to learn. So I'll be right back after I polish this, and it probably won't look much better. That stain will never come out. Uh, you'll, you'll see why in a minute. And there's the threads. How many threads per inch? I'll tell you in a few minutes if I remember. You should know that how many threads per inch there are on a imperial micrometer. Do the math. I'm not going to tell you. You know. First thing I'll do is take a Q-tip and I'm going to run it into the hole here and wipe it a little bit. Actually, I already did that. I'm, I have some brake cleaner on there. And there's a little bit of discoloration, but that's really the, the oil that I used. Now, before I put it together, two things. First of all, we need to oil a little bit here in the nut and just a drop here on the thread. I've actually already done that. And a little bit right here. Now the purpose of this nut here is to adjust the thread. If this turns too freely or is too loose, you would turn it in using your little wrench. I don't know if I should include this or not. And that can be tightened a little bit or loosened. But I think it's probably okay, so let's put it together. And by the way, as predicted, that stain didn't come out. I, I really knew it wouldn't. The anvils do not look real great on this. So let's close it up and see if it works or do I have to adjust it. And this is the correct way. For rapid movement. Alright, here is a genuine Sterrett standard. We'll see how far off it is. Far off is right on. By the way, there's a couple stains here. That's not going to, it's like a pit, really. So this isn't a perfect micrometer by any means. It's got J.P. Kelly's name on there. He's taking a dirt nap. I think I said that already on both sides. So we now have a very serviceable micrometer and I was surprised at how easy that was. Now let's tackle the other one and for some reason 
I have uh, uh, bad karma, whatever that means on this. Well, before I put it into that vise, let me see. See, it doesn't do any good to just turn this. That will cause it to slip on this screw, so I'm going to bring the vise back and try to clamp it onto that and turn it like that. See if we can do anything at all with that, or is this a lost cause? Again, no vice grips or pliers or hardened jaws or anything should, should be uh, used on something like this. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm holding that spindle in the vise and I'm going to tighten it up pretty tight see what happens here. I think it's slipping in the vise. Okay. It's freeing up. It's opening, but boy, it sure is tight. See it turning and opening? But it is tight, so I'm going to work that a little bit off camera. But that's good news. Okay, I got it freed up by holding the spindle in the vise, and now it's starting to get easier to turn. Yes. I think it's going to be all right. All right, I have it disassembled. Clean up the shotgun barrel. Actually, it's more like a 22, isn't it? Put some hoppies in there? No. That's cleaned up. Now, I will put this in the lathe and polish it. Again, it's stained. That's where it was sticking. Remember, it was all the way closed. Like that. And that's where the sticking was. Not rusty. I don't know what it is, but again, that won't come out, but let me polish it up and then we're ready to put it back together. This is a Sterrett number 230 micrometer. Again, those stains didn't come out. Notice that it has carbide face on the spindle. Again, this is the spindle, which goes all the way through, by the way, and it's held in by the screw. And this is the thimble. There's damage right there. And this is the friction thimble instead of a ratchet like some of them have. And then looking at the frame here again, frame, anvil, barrel, spindle lock. Make sure that's in the loose position. But when we flip this over, you can see that this one reads to the tenth of a thousandth. That's the vernier on the back of the barrel. I suppose most of you know that already. And I will clean it up just a little bit using my wife's favorite toothbrush. All right, I've already oiled it a little bit, and we'll put it together and see what happens. If it, see if it'll zero out. I doubt it. And by the way, while I still have it apart, this tiny little hole right here is meant to hook into the spanner. So if you're off by a half a thousandth or so, you put the wrench on here, and you can rotate the entire a uh, barrel here on the frame. Just a, a minute amount. But that's the purpose of that hole, just in case you've never done that. And now I'll put it together. Oh, my arm hurts. And we must always clean. 
This is actually the best method, piece of cardstock. Snug it down and draw the paper out of there and it, that should be about as clean as it could possibly get. And it does zero out. I can't believe how easy this was. Now would they have uh, loosened up without that compound without that liquid? Who knows? Because I did not attempt to force it until I soaked them. And I had thought that isn't going to work at all. I'll have to heat it up, you know, maybe boil that uh, liquid a little bit. But boy, this just turns so nice. Well, that's the exact way that I loosened this up 65 years ago. So there's lots of life left in these micrometers, even though they're a little tarnished and look a little bit beat and so on, but they're still perfectly serviceable and usable. They may end up on Peat Bay someday, who knows? But I'm happy and that little experiment that little demonstration was highly successful. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure and watch my other videos. I'll see you next time. Maybe there'll be a few still pictures at the end. We'll see. Even though the video is over, just two more things. First of all, the threads in all imperial micrometers are 40 threads per inch. I think you probably knew that. And the next, what is the mystery liquid? Is it really mare's urine? No. It's the ubiquitous WD-40, a product I have very little faith in. <laughs> but it worked, or maybe they came apart without, they would have come apart without that. I really don't know. But I think I'll throw that away. I don't want to contaminate. I got a whole gallon of it. So it's simply WD-40, but I would bet just about any thin oil would have worked.